Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Magnanimosity. We are a grassroots organization committed to unleashing the human spirit and maximizing the potential of future generations. This is part seven in a 10 part series entitled, Oh Yes We Are, Unleashing the Human Spirit. Please feel free to visit us at magnanimosity.webs.com. That's M-A-G-N-A-N I M O S I T Y dot W E B S dot C O M. In nineteen ninety four, Leo Sorger addressed the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, and this is what he said Circumcision causes pain, trauma, and a permanent loss of protective and erogenous tissue, removing normal, healthy, functioning tissue for no medical reason whatsoever. It has ethical implications. Circumcision violates the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 5, and the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. In 1998, Dr. Wayne published the following. Circumcision is not a medical decision. Preventing an improbable future infection is a spurious indication. The standard of care is antibiotics, not amputation. And this is what Dr. Wayne went on to say. As editor of a newspaper dedicated to infectious diseases, you know that antibiotics are the standard of care for infection and that surgery is a last resort for body parts for which there is no other cure perpetrating sexual surgery on healthy, non-consenting minors under the legal age of informed consent or refusal to purportedly prevent an unlikely and curable future infection is unacceptable. Intentionally amputating healthy, erogenous genital tissue from tethered, protesting infants is a surgical act of sexual sadism. Kaiser Foundation's Edgar Schoen ignores the erogenous benefits of the foreskin and a man's birthright to the sexual fulfillment he was born to experience. He would do well to stop promoting and perpetrating sexual surgery. He withholds from parents who have no ethical right to consent to unnecessarily sexually disendowing surgery on their children. The fact that the foreskin has sexual and erogenous functions he contends that circumcision protects against sexually transmitted disease. Dr. Schoen's failed attempt to justify surgical genital abuse is a willful act of misrepresentation. It is a disgrace and discredit to the medical profession. Ladies and gentlemen, the new thinking based on scientific evidence and incontrovertible facts has unfortunately been largely ignored by mothers everywhere. Why were mothers so quick to buy into the insane purports of quack doctors when it came to the proliferation of circumcision, yet are so slow to accept the facts that are a result of our most highly evolved and distilled medical research? that states unequivocally the fact that circumcision causes infinitely more harm than good. With regard to its religious significance and necessity, I ask you again, what creator would have us cause such a destructive act of violence on his most precious and innocent creations? Not to mention the fact that it is the ultimate arrogance to believe God's mistake requires fixing. I'm pretty sure God knew what he was doing when he put 20,000 nerve endings in the male foreskin. Why not just amputate our hands and while you're at it you may as well just remove our eyeballs and our taste buds. Pretty much the most prevalent argument that currently exists supporting the perpetuation of circumcision is the very brilliant quote unquote everybody else is doing it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's how a teenager justifies drinking and driving. Our mothers must be held to higher standards than that of drunken teenagers, even though in many cases that's exactly what they are. 
but circumcisions are commonplace and can rarely, if ever, be corrected. Every other day, another baby boy dies due to complications from circumcision. That is more than all death row executions in this country. His only crime? Being born male. Many of us are familiar with the fact that circumcised genitalia are robbed of the ability to enjoy optimum sensation, not to mention the fact that the foreskin contains many immunoenzymes not found anywhere else in the body. Those are minute problems. In contrast to the devastating emotional consequences, that is what I would like to primarily focus on now. Let's start with this. You have to wonder, and this is a very telling sign, how would any mother who engages in this ultimate act of destruction and harm have her child's best interest at heart? I ask you, is she simply cruel or unconscious? It must be one or the other. There really isn't any gray area here. At any rate, the child suffers equally regardless of the mother's intentions or lack thereof. Now I know this is a controversial topic and many people would rather bury their heads in the sand than engage in even the most primitive form of logic and intelligence. Is it possible that the perpetrators actually contribute profoundly to the universal degree of denial associated with the problem? Like all other forms of physical abuse, it robs the child of its identity and sets the meme that dictates life is painful. This meme manifests in varying degrees from victim to victim. Some victims will actually routinely inflict physical pain on themselves, synchronizing in a very literal way their actions with their thoughts. Others will subconsciously continue to seek all forms of situations and relationships that provide guaranteed psychic pain. This can range from disastrous mate choices to the sabotaging of our personal successes on many different levels. Control issues of all types will ensue. Certainly, being damaged at so young an age is the ultimate loss of control. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes part seven in a 10-part series entitled Unleashing the Human Spirit. Please join us tomorrow for part eight by using the keywords unleashing the human spirit. And again, please visit us at magnanimosity.webs.com. That's M-A-G-N-A-N-I-M-O-S-I-T-Y dot W-E-B-S dot C-O-M. And I thank you.